Hi, my creative friends, and welcome to the studio. Today I have a real treat for you. I have some Archer's watercolour paper, and I'm going to be making 42 swatches of watercolour texture techniques. I'm using a tag topper punch from Stampin' Up and cutting my two inch strips. Each strip is roughly six inches long. Let's get started. The first technique is using tin foil or aluminium foil or aluminium foil. And I'm using Daniel Smith watercolors, getting a nice layer done, scrunching up the foil. And I'm going to use this little dish. This dish is from Ikea. I use these for my palettes. And I'm just going to make a stamp using the tin foil. Couldn't be simpler. I'm going to use a black waterproof marker. This is a micron pen to write tin foil on the top. And there's the first one done. Now I'm going to use coffee. And this is coffee from my French press or my plunger coffee. It still has the grounds in the bottom. So I'm going to grab my mop brush and I'm going to dig into the very bottom and pick up some of those grounds and apply them to the paper. I've added about 50% water so that it's a wet mixture. And I'm going to add in some coloured watercolour over the top. And I'm going to leave this overnight to dry. Some of these techniques do need to be left overnight. This would be the first one. I have some Primatec colours. This is Mayan Blue Genuine. And I'm just dabbing that in. A little bit goes a long way. So there's our coffee swatch. Next I'm using a gift card or you could use a credit card or a room key card and I'm going to lay down just a layer underneath first and using this palette again and I'm going to dip the edge of the credit card, this, this is actually a gift card, into the paint and you get these lovely lines and the other thing you can do is you can swipe your card and you get a swipe effect as well. Now I'm going to grate some ink tense pencil onto wet paint. So first of all, I'll lay down a light layer. And I have this small sieve or you could use a nutmeg grater, anything that will grate the top of the pencil. And I'm going to use three different colors so that it will give a beautiful rainbow effect. And as the Inktense pencils hit the paper, they start to diffuse because they are in wet paint. And I'll set that one aside to dry too. I have some palette paper on my desk and I'm just wiping that with a damp cloth between each swatch. Now we're doing crayon resist using a white Crayola crayon. And this is probably going to take two coats. So I'm going to do a light coat first and I'm going to let that dry naturally. And then I'll add a little bit more over as a second coat once it's dry. So it's very faint, but once it dries and I add a second coat, you'll see what I mean. Now I'm going to do some blooms. So you start with some very wet paint. You can do this on dry paper or on wet. And I'm just going to drop in some clear water with my mop brush, just tapping the brush to the paper. Now I'm going to add in some buff titanium and you can see those lovely blooms forming. It 
setting that one aside to dry. Next is masking fluid. You've most probably seen the masking fluid in the bottle, but did you know it's also available in a pen? Very much like a Posca pen, you need to prime it to get it started, give it a good shake, prime it on some scrap paper until you bring the masking fluid down into the nib. And you can use this really quickly and you can really be exact with it. There's no dipping back and forward. You just want to keep pressure on the pen. You can see how fast you can draw something quite intricate. And I'm just thickening up the stem. And I'm going to put this aside to dry before I put the next layer of paint on it. Next is salt. I have a couple of varieties. I have some rock salt and I have some salt flakes. This is Windsor & Newton Professional Payne's Grey, which I think with arch watercolour paper is the perfect combination for making really wonderful salt patterns. And this will have to dry probably for several days. I think perhaps two days. Next is graffito, which I'm going to do with some skewers. I just have a regular skewer and a thicker skewer so I can get thin and thick marks. It's very simple. You just scratch into the wet paint and make whatever designs you like. This really is a fun play session. I hope you're gathering your supplies and joining in with me. So that masking fluid is dry, so I'm just going to put a layer of two different shades of green over the top, and maybe even a little blue, and then mushing it all together. <laughs> and then it needs to sit and dry again before we can take the masking fluid off. So that's probably going to be several hours. I'll just put that aside. Next is a grainer brush. Now, when you first see a grainer brush, this is from Princeton. When you first see a grainer brush, you think it looks like a regular brush, but look what happens when you dip it into water and wet it. What happened to my brush? <laughs> the bristles have disappeared and now there are these little spikes. So it's a special brush that is made to produce these wonderful line shapes. I'm doing a bit of dry brushing first. Now I'm adding a bit more water and you can see with a wet brush that it's quite different again. It's great for getting really interesting patterns and designs. Pretty cool. So that's the grainer brush. Next we have good old plastic wrap, saran wrap, cling wrap, glad wrap. And I'm putting my two favourite colours of all time, green gold and Aussie red gold. I think they are a great colour combo. So let's get out some of this plastic wrap, pop it on the top, smoosh it around with your fingers. You can draw lines, you can dab at it. You can sort of make tree shapes if you do long straight lines, but I want to make a little design on this. So that is going to sit aside overnight. Next is a sea sponge. Sea sponges make great leaves and I'm going to show you how to make the texture of leaves with this sea sponge. So you just dab away. Great in landscapes when you want to get a bit of texture into a very easy tree. And it works even better when you add a second colour. So I'm adding a little bit of blue which will give us a darker green. And look at that. Easy peasy. Next, I'm doing Ink Tense Pencil in wet, and this is absolutely my favourite technique of all. It's something that I didn't learn for a very long time, even though I'd had Ink Tense Pencils for many years. But when I used this technique of using it in really wet paint and letting it dry, well, you'll see how good it is. I've got three different colours, and I'm just going to add some designs. So it drags the paint around a little bit 
but it just becomes the most vibrant, gorgeous colours. It also means you have an enormous amount of control over your line work. So this is something that looks fantastic on florals or abstract work. This has a real wow factor and I love it. Look at that. So next we have paper straws. I have a thick straw and a thin straw and we're going to use the paint in a very watery fashion. So I'm bringing in a little blob of paint and I'm taking a pipette and adding water so that it's very wet. And just blow through the straw. A second colour always works really well too. A good blob of colour. And I'm going to turn it around so that I can blow from the other direction. Clean up the paper with a little bit of a damp mop. And the thick straw is easier than the thinner one. But if you only have a thin paper straw or one of those metal straws, they'd work too. Stick around till the end of the video and I'm going to show you all of these 42 swatches once they're dried and finished. Next, we're doing brush splatters. And I'm doing about half of my swatch card with a background and the other half I'm going to leave white. And I have a long, thin brush, which works really well for this. You can also use a flat brush. You'll get much wider splatters if you have a wider area to go over. And when you use your finger, it seems to give you better control. They're much finer, softer splatters. And it always is a good idea to add another colour, because why not? And you can see how beautiful that is in these granulating colours. Now I'm going to make some masks from washi tape. I've got three different thicknesses. If you're playing along with me, just pause the video at the end of each session so it gives you time to catch up. Experimenting like this and having a good old play session is a great way to improve as an artist. And it helps you understand your supplies. I have a list of the supplies I'm using in the description under the video, so you can pause, take a look at that, and you'll have everything you need within arm's reach. Here I'm using colours that are non-granulating, so they're nice and smooth, so I get a nice smooth effect. So if you're not sure which colours granulate and which are non-granulating, you can look on the manufacturer's website for most brands of paints. You can also see which paints lift off easily if you're trying to do some lifting techniques. So whether they're low staining or high staining. So if they're low staining, they will lift off without too much effort. High staining paints will not. These paints are duochrome paints that I'm using at the moment, the blue and the green. And I'm going to leave that to dry. Next, I'm going to use an HB pencil in wet paint. So this is just a regular graphite pencil that you would use to draw with. And I'm making sure the paint's nice and wet taking my pencil and just drawing a design into it. And what this does, it moves the paint around and you can see the graphite once it's dry. You can see that grey of the graphite, but you can also see colours coming in the top section there where I've pushed the paint with the pencil and created those really fine lines there. Next is a fan brush. And this is a really good brush for special techniques. 
It looks like a spiky garden rake <laughs> once it's wet. It's even spikier than the grainer brush, but it's great for doing these fan-shaped lines or straight lines or dots. And it's a great one for playing with to get these interesting effects. Now I'm using acrylic ink. So acrylic ink can be used a couple of ways. You can mix it in with your paints to make a more pastel version of the color. If you're using say a white or a buff acrylic ink, or you can darken it with some black. But here I'm going to use acrylic ink over the top of the wet watercolor. And just like making blooms, I'm just using the dropper to drop the, the acrylic paint or the acrylic ink onto the paper. And you can see it starts to diffuse and spread out in the wet paint. And it's really vibrant in the colors that it produces. Now you can let it dry flat or you can move it around. I'm going to move it around. It makes the most beautiful organic abstract shapes. This next technique uses glassine paper or wax paper, whatever you have. So I'm just going to tear some off the roll and tear it into strips. And you can tear your strips down into smaller pieces or break them in half. And I'm just going to lay some stripes of colour. Sort of like a landscape. I'm going to have some greens and oranges and blues. Nice and thick and have the colours touching. And just lay your pieces on top. Tear them into smaller strips if you need to and press them down so that they are touching all of the paint. And I'm going to put an acrylic block over the top of this just to hold the strips of glassine in place so they won't curl up as it dries. And leave that overnight. The next technique is dry brushing. And for this, you might want to start on some scratch paper first. You can use a flat brush or you can use a long brush on its side like this, which also gives interesting marks. If you need to, remember to pause the video and go and get more supplies, or you can save it and come back and watch the rest at a later date. Now I'm using a stencil. I'm just laying down some light color first and letting that dry completely. I'm going to use a hairdryer or if you want, you could use a heat gun to dry that off. I'm just using a hairdryer so it's dry. Grabbing my stencil and some sticky tape. I have a flat stencil brush here. And I'm going to use that same long dish, which has quite thick paint in it. Using my Scotch Magic tape. This also makes great masking tape if you're masking down your paper. But this will ensure the tag doesn't move and I can just pounce and stencil away. Just make sure your paint is fairly thick for this. You don't want it too runny or it will run under the stencil. But this came out really well. The next technique is ballpoint pen trace. So I'm using some tracing paper and a ballpoint pen and I'm drawing a sun and a few hill shapes. 
and you can always trace over this again because you have your marks on your tracing paper and you can line it up with your painting again and retrace if the lines aren't quite indented enough. I'm going to put my first layer of paint on this and let it dry and come back and I'm going to trace a second time once the paint's dry and add another layer of paint. So it's like a two-step process, this one. So it's indenting lines into your paper. It's not showing up so well there. It will show up better when it's dry. And then when I indent again and put a second layer on, it will be fabulous. Okay, alcohol's the next one. So I'm using one of these alcohol blending pens. You could use isopropyl alcohol or Copic colorless fluid. Any of those would work. And I'm going to lay down a thick layer of paint you can spray alcohol onto your paper, but if I was doing that, I would want to do that outdoors. And it gives you similar results to this anyway. This blending pen has a very fine tip and a slightly broader tip, and you'll see I get different sized circles when I turn the pen around. And over time, you'll see them start to diffuse and get bigger anyway. My ballpoint pen trace is dry, so I'm going to come over and retrace onto the dry paint. And I can clearly see where I lined up my picture the last time, so this is quite simple. And I'm pressing a little bit heavier this time. Just checking that it's in the right spot. This is very thick tracing paper too, so I need to press a bit harder. And now this second layer is going on, and this is where it really starts to show up. So you can see the pattern developing there, and it'll be even better once it's dry. The next technique is clear embossing powder, which I'm going to set with a heat gun. I'm using Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink, and I'm going to use powder on that. So it needs something sticky for the powder to stick to. And the embossing powder will melt once I add the heat tool. So when you're stamping, you want to have a stamping mat or a mouse mat underneath you so that you get a good impression. Here's the clear embossing powder, sprinkling it on, tapping off the excess. And I have a little dry brush that I can clean off any bits that I didn't want on there, any little specks. Pop it back into the case, put the lid on before you put your heat tool onto it or it will blow all over the table. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> So I have the heat tool on and you want to wait until the embossing powder gets nice and shiny, which means it's melted. And then once it's cooled down, which only takes about 10 seconds, you can paint over the top of it. And it's going to create a resist and the stamp is going to show clearly through from underneath. Isn't that pretty? Really cool. The next technique is plastic bag transfer. So I have a sandwich bag and I'm putting some quite thick paint on it. Just a couple of different colors. Simply turn your bag over and press it onto your card. And this gives a great abstract look. The bigger the bag, the larger the sheet of paper you can print on. The next technique is glazing. And for this, you'll want paints that don't granulate. The under color I'm using here is a granulating color, but I'm going to let it dry first. This is buff titanium. 
And then the two colours I'm putting on top to glaze are duochrome colours, which are not granulating, they're nice and smooth. So that's duochrome autumn mystery, duochrome turquoise. And this gives a lovely smooth finish. And the glazing changes the colours ever so slightly. The next technique is brush markers. These are Zig Clean Reel brush markers, and you can use them like a paintbrush. Without any water, you can use them dry, and on this cold pressed paper, it gives a dry brush effect on the ash paper. You can add water and pull the colour in, and it still has rather a rough effect, which is really great on this paper. I really like it. It's really interesting. It would give different effects on hot pressed paper, which is the smooth paper. In fact, all of these techniques would look slightly different on hot pressed paper. Now I'm going to use the brush and press heavier as I go towards the bottom so the lines become thicker and just do some squiggles. And the paint is still a little bit wet so the brush is running really well over that rough paper. The next technique is bubble wrap. I'm going to use two colours for this. Just putting them down and painting them directly onto the bubbles. And for this technique, you're going to want to put it on and put a weight over it so that it doesn't curl up. I'm going to use a clear acrylic block and leave it overnight to dry. The next technique is bokeh, which is a photography technique. And it's often used in backgrounds and looks like little round orbs of light. So I'm using two very soft colours. I'm using duochrome turquoise and duochrome oceanic, which I know will lift off really easily. They're non-staining paints. I'm using a circle template from Stedler and a Chuck's Magic Eraser. I'm putting the eraser into the water, squeezing most of the water out of it, gently rubbing, and then using a tissue to get rid of any excess moisture. And with this method, I find it's important to wipe down the back of the template each time so you're not spreading the water around your painted surface. Now, I'm not rubbing hard. You don't need to because these are paints that lift easily and I don't want to damage the paper anyway. So the Chuck's Magic Eraser can make things like sun rays if you use something like a sheet of acetate and run it across your page that creates beautiful sun rays and it can lift out mistakes and clean up bits of your painting but in this case I'm using it just to lift out those lovely circles to make bokeh. The next technique is using gouache. Now I'm using a very dark colour here because I want this to be quite dramatic. I'm using indigo and I'm going to put white gouache over the top you can also use gouache to mix into your colours to produce more pastel colours or softer versions of your watercolour. It will change the properties of the watercolour too, but that can be very interesting in and of itself. I only have one tube of gouache and it's white. So I'm going to use the white, which I think is a really useful one to get. This is the Winsor & Newton white gouache I'm using. It's the professional white gouache. And you can see how you can have quite a vivid image over the top of that very dark indigo paint using white gouache. And it's a great alternative to using a white Posca pen. And I like being able to come back in like this and tidy up with a nice fine brush. I'm going to add some dots. And you can make any colour of gouache by adding whatever colour watercolour paint you want. So you only need to buy the white. Next, I'm using watercolour powder. These are Lindy's Magicals powder, which are similar to brushos. And I'm bringing back that dry fan brush that I used earlier. And the fan brush, you just want to touch the tiniest amount of 
powder to your paper because this goes a very long way. So these are mica powders and once they hit water or water hits the powders, you'll see the magic happen. It's a complete magic trick. <laughs> so these are from Lindy's Stamp Gang and they're called Magicals. You can also get brushes, which are watercolour powders and other brands as well. I'm using a lot of gold because I really like this gold. It's shimmery. Always put your lids back on so that you don't spill this. And I'm just going to spritz with some water. And the more I spritz, and you can see I'm spritzing from a fairly vertical fashion, you can see the colours that come out of this are just so vibrant. Putting that aside to dry. The next technique is line and wash and I'm going to use my micron pen which I've been using to write the titles. Any waterproof fine liner pen will work for this. This is quite a fine line so I'm doing some nice detailed little marks on this piece of paper. It's sort of going to be an abstract landscape and I'm adding in a few lines here and there. And I'm going to choose colours that you might see in fields where there are crops growing for my painted areas. Just using some light colours there. I want it to be nice and smooth and I don't want to cover up the black lines. So I don't want anything like indigo on this. It'll just cover the lines up. I want something that is a fairly transparent paint. So I'm using the duochrome turquoise here. And just using a light wash. And this technique is wonderful for very intricate landscapes where you might want to put in a, a farmhouse or a fence in the distance or some distant trees. You can also get waterproof micron pens in brown, which is a great colour to work with landscapes. I'm going to sneak in another little technique here, which is lifting clouds out with a tissue while the paint is wet. And because I know that that colour lifts easily, that works great for skies. That's a duochrome turquoise sky. And the little clouds can be lifted out very easily while it's still wet. I really love how this turned out. The next technique is a toothbrush, which makes for a very messy fingers. <laughs> so you might want to use gloves for this, but I love using the toothbrush as a paintbrush because it's usually a bit curvy and you can get interesting, unusual dry brushing marks with this. It's really fun. Gelato sticks are the next technique. These are by Faber-Castell and they're a very creamy watercolor crayon much creamier than a traditional watercolour crayon, which is why they're called gelatos, I guess. They're creamy like ice cream. And the colours are very creamy too. So I'm just adding a little water. You don't need a lot to activate these. And there's various ways you can use them. So you can colour in your shapes. You can draw the colour from the outside to the inside of the shape, like I'm going to do here with this curve shape I'm drawing the colour down or you can completely paint over the top. So gelato sticks are wonderful. Wet in wet is a very common technique so with the Arsh watercolour paper it takes a little while to wake up. I've put a tiny little bit of yellow in with that water so you can see where the water is. Wet in wet techniques provide a really good place for the colours to blend into each other without any hard lines. But you can still drop highly pigmented colour in and watch it diffuse. So I'm using a pipette to drop this colour in with and then pulling it out with a brush. more of the pipette and you can see how that diffuses into these amazing little shapes in the wet paint. Next technique is watercolour markers. These are by Winsor & Newton, they're professional markers and they have a fine tip and a brush tip. So you can draw with them and you can lay down colour with them. 
and you can have a darker area where the brush is and pull that into a lighter space like I'm doing here with just a little bit of water. So most watercolour markers have a fine tip and a brush tip. You can get some dry brush techniques with the fine point on cold pressed watercolour paper like this very thick 300 GSM paper. And you can have a brush to pull out some of the pigment. You can strengthen it up with the brush tip. And these are a lot of fun to work with. You can write with them. And then you can pull out some of that pigment to give interesting effects to your text. Or you can just use them to colour in. Add your water and it smooths everything out perfectly. Add a few dots and dashes. I'm pulling some of the pigment from that circle to create the dots and the dashes. The next technique is stamps. So I have some acrylic stamps here and you'll need to stamp onto a stamping mat or a mouse pad. So you need a little cushion underneath which will give you the best results. You can use rubber stamps or acrylic stamps for this. If you're using acrylic stamps, you'll need a little acrylic block to mount them to. And I'm bringing back that same Ikea dish, which has been very useful as a stamping palette. Putting on some colour with a brush, pressing it in, and you get a really good impression because there is a stamping mat underneath, or you could use a cellulose sponge from the kitchen or a mouse mat, and that will give you the same effect. Pretty cool. The next technique is water soluble graphite. These are aquarelle graphite pencils. And I think I've got a, a thin pencil and a thick pencil. I can't remember what I used, but you can see I'm doing thin lines with this one, thin wavy lines and then thicker lines with this one. And I'm going to make a quaver, a musical quaver and do a little bit of sketching around there to fill it in. Give it some strength and then add some water. I'll put my stave in, so I'll put my five lines in. Very large note. And when you add the watercolour paint, you'll drag some of the graphite out into the surrounding area. And this is what makes it really fun. This is a really moody, abstract way to paint with the graphite showing through and becoming part of the picture. And it will add that deep, dark color to your watercolor paints. And I really love how this turned out. I think it's really gorgeous. And so fast. The next technique is watercolor crayons. These are from Curran Dash. They are Neo Color 2 watercolor crayons. And I'm just going to Use them to do some sketching and a few little designs. You can also use these crayons over a finished painting. However, they will smudge because they haven't been activated with water. So if you're using them in an art journal or something like that, you may want to interleave the pages with some glassine paper or wax paper so that your work doesn't get smudged on the opposite page. So I'm just drawing in whatever takes my fancy here with the colours that I like. And I'm going to draw it out with water, just like I did with the markers. They're very easy to blend. We are almost at the very end of the video. So if you stuck through to this length, we're at number 41, one more to go. I'm putting up a whole series of shorts of three of each of these techniques, which will be on my channel as well. So that's another thing for you to look for if you want a reminder of some of these. And I'll only be giving you three at a time with those, but that will be just a fun way to remember what it is that we've been making in this session here today. So there's the Neo Color 2s, the watercolor crayons. And the second last 
ink tense pencils with water. Now I'm going to draw a little bird here and I'm going to draw quite a detailed bird and I'm changing up the colors as I go. And the aim for this is to show you how neat and tidy watercoloring can actually be. It's a very small picture with very small areas of watercolor pencil and a very small amount of water. And you can see the effect I get. It's very controlled and it's very simple and neat and tidy. So if you like neat and tidy, this is one of the methods I recommend for you. It also takes care of water control because you're only using a very small amount of water. That's all you need to draw out these pencils. And with the ink tense pencils, once they're dry, they're permanent. I'm going to add a little bit of gray shadow underneath. And then I'm going to do some scumbling with a green pencil underneath and I'll show you what scumbling is just very lightly. And I'm going to draw this out with some water too. So if you're a neat and tidy person and you like things spick and span and nothing out of place, this is a really good technique for neat freaks. Just fantastic. It's all in one place, just a little water, some pencils and a brush and you can be happy as a lark. You can see how neat that is. And this is the very last technique, liquid watercolour. I am using some re-inkers from watercolour ink pads, but you can also purchase liquid watercolours. And I'm just laying down a tiny bead because you don't need a large amount of this. It's highly concentrated. And I have a paper towel underneath to catch the drips. And drips are what I'm going to make happen now with a flat brush, just tipping it to the top of each of those shapes and you'll watch the drips drop down onto the paper towel. And you can see how highly pigmented this is. So give it a bit of a tap, turn it up the other way, and I might create some drips going down the other way with the same technique. We'll have a drip going down the middle. And then I'm going to let that some of those drips fall onto the paper towel so there's not too much on the card and then with a small amount of water just pull some colour out. And this to me looks like a 60s abstract art piece. <laughs> I really like it. I think it turned out really well. And in a moment I'm going to show you all of the swatch cards finished, dried and how they all turned out. So here they are, all 42 textures for watercolour. Did I miss any techniques? Do you know some techniques that aren't on here? I'd love to hear in the comments below if you have some ideas for watercolour texture that you haven't seen here today. Remember to save this video so you have it for future. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, that would be great because you won't miss any more of these tutorials and videos. And you can tag me on Instagram at Vicky Parfano Studio. I also have an ongoing free watercolour school for absolute beginners. And you can find that on my watercolour playlist on my channel as well. Well, I've had an absolute blast today. This has been fun for me. I love doing all these techniques and remembering that I have so many lovely watercolour materials to play with, getting them out and having a good play session. And I'm so glad you're able to join me today. 
and nothing says watercolour better than a good tape reveal. So let's take the tape off and see what we have here with the washi mask tape. Just wonderful. So remember to watch out for my shorts, which will be three ways to create texture using watercolour materials. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I love likes, I love comments, and I love spending this time with other people who are so enthusiastic about their art journey. Remember the materials I've used and where you can purchase them are listed in the description. Click on the bell so you'll receive all notifications of where my next tutorials as I publish them. Can you believe we spent this time making 42 watercolour texture technique swatch cards. Here's the plastic wrap. I'm going to pull that off gently and you can see, oh, that looks so great. It's definitely worth leaving some of these overnight to dry so that you get the full effect of the technique that you've made. And my favourite colour of gouache, top tip, white. It's the only colour you need. You can mix it with any other colour and it looks great over the top of something like indigo. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials that you'd like me to make, or perhaps one of these techniques has really grabbed your eye, let me know in the comments. I will also be starting a class on abstract watercolour card making, where we'll be using a lot of these same materials, as well as a little bit of acrylic paint. And I'll show you how to improve your composition and how to make very simple, easy, abstract greeting cards using watercolour paints. I'll look forward to spending some time with you again next time. Have a fantastic day. Bye for now.